how many people are here for your first game jam? Nice. Welcome. I hope you have a good time. Uh, just a quick thanks to uh, a few of our sponsors. Uh, obviously, the Science Center for hosting us this weekend. We couldn't do it without them, literally. So please give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> for helping us get more space so we can have more of you here to jam, which is pretty awesome. Uh, G Fuel Energy Formula, we have a whole bunch of drink mix and shaker cups for you to take, as many as you want. Uh, don't try to don't drink too many at all, that's just one time I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Turbo Play, who, uh, they'll be here on Sunday to talk about their new uh, store that they're launching very soon, which is pretty exciting. Uh, obviously, Seattle Indies, AIE, uh, I think that's about all uh, in terms of local sponsors. Uh, we also have Microsoft and Valve who will be uh, joining us this weekend to check things out and uh, do some mentoring too, so uh, that's a pretty nice thing that we have going on. Uh, if this is your first game jam, here's some uh, essential tips for jamming uh, that you might want to remember. Obviously, form a team, make the things, upload it to globalgamejam.org, which we'll talk about uh, probably tomorrow or Sunday. We can help you out with that. And then uh, present, we'll have final presentations right here on Sunday, starting around seven o'clock. Everybody will get five to 10-ish minutes to show all the stuff that you've uh, been working on for these next 48 hours, or by then past 48 hours. Uh, if you're still able to stand and talk, then you can come up here and show us your game and hopefully uh, everything will work and there won't be any bugs at all and it'll be all great. Uh, some golden rules of the game jam. Uh, always welcome game jam participants you don't know. One of the uh, great parts about a game jam is meeting new people and trying new things. Uh, so if you see some new people and they're looking for a team, and uh, please welcome them into your circle. Uh, you never know what kind of uh, fun stuff that you're going to end up making with these new people that you never met before. Uh, obviously be respectful of the space you're in and the tools you have. Uh, try to keep your area as clean as possible. Don't touch other people's stuff without asking. Uh, if there's trash bins over here for any uh, trash or recyclables you may have, so please feel free to uh, dispose of anything you have over there. Uh, ask for help. Ask your, ask your fellow jammers. Uh, we have a mentor table where we're gonna have mentors throughout the weekend. Also, we have our Discord channel with Ask a Mentor channel. Uh, you can go in there and ask questions about anything that you have questions about. Hopefully we'll have somebody with an answer or we can find somebody uh, to answer your questions if they're not on hand. Uh, be brave and speak up. Like I said, this is a game jam is all about fun and trying new things. Uh, don't be afraid to like, Give your ideas, however crazy they might sound, and give your input because uh, that's why you're here, to just have fun and try new stuff. Uh, be respectful of different ideas and experiences. You know, just be, like we said before, just be respectful of each other. Uh, and under, for Seattle Indies, we have our own code of conduct, uh, which we have on signs up here, you can find on our website. So please, uh, if you have any issues with anybody here at the gym that makes you feel uncomfortable, uh, come see us at the front desk and we can uh, help you with that. Hopefully none of that will happen, but if it does, we're available. And uh, please don't try to resolve it yourself. Uh, just come find one of the volunteers and we'll help you uh, resolve it if something does happen. And the last bit of advice, use deodorant, please. Uh, we have deodorant and many other personal uh, care effects at the front table. We have toothbrushes, mouthwash, body wipes, deodorant, uh, all sorts of personal items, Advil if you get a headache or something, you know, feel free to take as much as you want and use it liberally. <laughs> Here's our uh, high level schedule for the weekend. Uh, obviously now we're at the welcoming, opening part. Uh, once we're done here, We'll do a little brainstorming in this area. You'll have like a half hour once you see the theme to come up with ideas. Uh, if you don't have a team already uh, and you want to come up and pitch, we'll have you come up here to the podium. You'll get 60 seconds to pitch your idea. Uh, generally, people just give like a one sentence idea about their game idea and then tell like what kind of skills you have. Like I'm a programmer and I would need artists and sound people to make my game or you know whatever your skills are. That's generally how the pitches work. Uh, 
so after those are done, uh, we'll team form, form teams and then start jamming. Uh, we obviously have too many people here that can fit in this space, so we have some overflow space uh, back where we were last year, if you were here, in building four, uh, up by the Packard IMAX theater. Uh, or if you have like, if you don't like seeing the sun as much, which you'll see here tomorrow, it's a kind of less room with less windows, so uh, if like you get headaches or something from sunlight, we can help you get set up over there. Uh, we'll walk people over after we're done with all the proceedings here. Uh, but tomorrow, <coughs> we'll have breakfast uh, at around 10.30. Uh, we'll have mentors on site throughout the day, and uh, we'll help you get your teams registered on globalgamejam.org. Uh, before, at some point during the day tomorrow. Uh, that's a fairly key aspect so that you can upload your game uh, and get credit for your work. Uh, at five o'clock, we will be going live on the main Global Game Jam stream on Mixer, which is the streaming partner for Global Game Jam this year, uh, which means they'll be rebroadcasting our stream. Uh, I'll probably be coming around asking any and all of you to come participate in that. Uh, come bring your work in progress and show it to the world and talk about uh, what you're working on and why you love uh, doing game jams and global game jam in particular. Uh, after that, we will have dinner, and I know it says four o'clock for the play test, but we'll probably do that more close to dinner time or after. Uh, so if you have a game that's ready for play testing at that time tomorrow night, uh, we'll have a way that you can get people to come. You can like, you can tell us, the organizers and volunteers, that you're ready, and then we'll send people your way to come play test it and give you feedback. Uh, it's really useful usually to make sure that your game is dialed in because that's about the time when you want most of your main uh, features to be working, and after that you can cut what doesn't work and polish the rest. Uh, and then on Sunday at breakfast again, around 4 to 5 o'clock, you'll start uploading your games to globalgamejam.org. Uh, and then uh, Around five, the uh, mentors have a chance to go around and play any games. Uh, especially if you're working on a VR game, let us know. We'd like the mentor judges to actually play those. They don't, they're a little bit harder to present on the big screen, so it would make more sense if, they're, if they actually got to play it. And if you have a game that's ready for them to play, great, and let us know. Uh, and then the final presentations, as I said, will be here. Starting six or seven o'clock, we'll have a dinner to go along with that. Uh, feel free to invite people who are not participating in the jam to come check that out. And that will also be uh, streaming on our Twitch and Mixer channels. Uh, and now I'll let Daniel come up and talk a little bit about logistics for the Science Center. Cool. Hi, everyone. So, hi. Uh, my name is Daniel. So I am the uh, person from Pacific Science Center that's helping uh, put this whole thing on. Um, and I was just going to let you guys know some logistics behind Science Center, things going on here. Um, theoretically, this is a map, however, it's sideways, and that's completely non-useful. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so jamming is going to happen um, in this space where you currently are. We have, theoretically, the right number of seats to have about 130 folks in this space, so the majority of people are going to be in here. Uh, Upper Building 4, which is the space that um, we used last year, if you were here, and if you are not familiar with that space, we can walk you over there. Um, has another space for about 45 people. So everyone's gonna have a spot. Um, it's kind of depending on how much of a vampire you are and how much sunlight you wanna see. Um, during the day from 10 to six, there will be guests in both spaces doing their thing. Um, if you are so inclined to say, hey, wanna check out my thing, great. And if you're not, don't worry, that's why we're up here so we can play interference for you guys. Look, there's animations on my map that don't work. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what's important to know is how do you leave now that you're here. So you can go back out the doors um, that are right over here to get back to the courtyard. That's really easy. Um, you can also um, go out the doors to the courtyard from building four. And then throughout the uh, entire event, if you go out the north entrance with your lanyard on, you can come back in the north entrance with your lanyard on again. Oh. Um, if you take a look on the back of your, of your name tag, you'll see some times. It'll say north entrance from 11 a.m. to midnight. Um, from midnight to 11 a.m., you're gonna go back through the reception entrance. So you can come and go 24 hours a day, but the door you have to use changes. So it's north entrance, when it says on your name tag, and it's reception the rest of the time. 
Um, and then past that, there's two other important things to know. One is that um, sleeping, if you're here at a time when guests aren't here, so any time besides 10 to 6, you can sleep anywhere in upper building floor or anywhere in this space over here. The one consideration for this space is that there's a bunch of cool insects and animals over there. You're welcome to go look at them. Please don't sleep immediately in front of the cages or else someone will step on you in the morning when they have to go feed those insects. Um, and then during the day, we have a classroom reserved for you in building four as well. Um, and I will um, put that information on the Discord so you can find it because it's not so useful on the map. So there will always be sleeping also if you are so inclined. You are also welcome to leave as an option if you don't, know, you don't find our floors that comfortable. Um, so um, bathrooms, you've got some that are right over here. You've got some that are in the courtyard right by where you guys checked in. More animations that don't work. Look, it was going to be so fun. Oh, well. Look, there's the no smoking thing. Cool. sleeping. Um, but yeah, so I'll be taking pictures and video and all that neat stuff. So enjoy the game jam. <laughs> uh, if you're uncomfortable with having your picture taken or anything like that and share it online, just uh, let, the peop let people know uh, before they take your picture. That's fine. We don't have a problem with that. Just uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try to avoid that. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, we have some uh, amazing mentors that are going to be here throughout the weekend at different times. Uh, do we have any of them here with us right now? No. Uh, I don't mind coming up to, just 
quickly introduce yourself and uh, talk about your uh, expertise with this. Hi, I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Tom. Uh, I work for HTC by day, and I work at uh, my own game on Periodic Studios by night. And um, I am a Unity VR and programming expert. If you have any programming questions, especially anything with Unity and C Sharp, please don't, don't feel free to hit me up. I'll be over here uh, uh, for until later tonight. And I'll try to be here most of the time. Aaron Leiby also work with uh, now on VR. Um, and we're just here, you don't have to ask us VR questions. Both of us work on lots of game things, uh, lots of graphics things. Um, and we happen to be gamers also. Um, so we'd, we'd love to chat with you. I'm here tonight and on Sundays, but I'll be on Discord all weekend. So I'll follow the Ask a Mentor. And if you have a question, you can, uh, you can let me know. But I look forward to um, seeing what you guys are up to. Thank you. Uh, as you can see on the list, we have many more mentors uh, that will be here 
either tomorrow or on Sunday, and they'll be in the Ask a Mentor channel on, on Discord. Uh, I'd also like to give a quick shout out to former mentors that are here participating in the gym with us this weekend. Uh, Rebecca, Fernando, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> Glad to see you all back participating this time. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, our friends from Turbo Play. They're going to join us actually on Sunday. Uh, you'll see Lisa. She was here earlier. You prob most of you probably already know Lisa if you've been to any gaming related events in Seattle. Uh, she'll be here on Sunday to talk about Turbo Play. Uh, I'll switch hats for a minute and talk about IGDA since I also help run the Seattle <laughs> chapter of IGDA, and IGDA helps sponsor this event for us. Uh, we are the International Game Developers Association, a, the lar world's largest uh, game development organization, professional organization. Uh, they are an advoca advocacy group for uh, game developers all over the world. Uh, they help with uh, networking, uh, help you set up, a, help set up events for game developers. Uh, we host events monthly here in Seattle. Uh, we're actually having one here at the Science Center at the end of February that you can sign up for now that's going to be co-hosted uh, with Foundry 10 and Seattle EdTech to talk about the intersection of games and education. Uh, we're going to have some talks and some breakout sessions. It should be a really good event. Uh, you can find it on uh, www.igdaseattle.org. Uh, you don't have to be a member to participate in our events. Uh, if you do become a member of IGDA, though, you can get discounts on things like Unity uh, licenses and uh, tickets to industry events uh, like Tax Dev, GDC, which is coming up very soon, uh, and a whole host of other events. I have a list of them up here at the front table if you're interested. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much what I have to say about that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, as Doug reminds me, we also have an IGDA Seattle YouTube channel, which has all of our talks from last year that you can go watch now. Uh, there's a lot of great talks there. There's uh, one from Will Roger about uh, his work on the soundtrack of Call of Duty World at War. Uh, that was very interesting, among uh, other pretty interesting talks that we've had. Okay, uh, so we'll do what this slide says, brainstorming. After we get to Tim asked me to give a talk to kind of get you guys in the spirit of the jam. So I thought to get myself in the spirit of the jam, I would do like a speech jam and write this talk in the car on the drive here. <laughs> <laughs> so like shout out some diversifiers and see if I can add some like additional themes to this talk. Any diversifiers? Multiplayer? Can somebody else want to come? What? What's that? Accessibility. Accessibility. I don't I, Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this talk for blind people too so they don't have to see me. What was that? Jeopardy style questions. Jeopardy style questions. I'm going to try for that one really hard. <laughs> what? what about the blockchain? Oh, I'm, I'm going to work blockchain in. One more on here? Solid remembrance of World War I. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Solid remembrance of World War I. See if I can work that in. All right, so ultimately, though, I decided, okay, the best thing I could do is just tell you guys about some of the stories of jams that I've done in the past, and some of the things I've learned from that. Um, so I wanted to start with last year's Global Game Jam. Uh, in the beginning, and we'll do the same thing again this year, there's gonna be some videos that tell us about the jam, tell us the theme. Uh, one of them last year was this guy doing these like crazy exercises and telling us like really weird rules of the jam, and one of them was don't finish your game. And I, was like, <laughs> I always try to finish my game. But his point was, uh, you know, the project that you build isn't really the point of why you're here, that there's all this value in the people that you meet and the skills that you learn, and there's all these secondary goals that are happening. Uh, and so I was like, oh, cool, like, I'm gonna make it a point to, like, talk to everybody and have relationships with, like, people that work for companies that I wanna work for, and I'm gonna try to, like, you know, network everything. 
And I got on this team with a friend of mine, and he's the kind of person who networked with everybody and made all these friendships and talked to all the people who worked for companies that I want to work for. And I was like, why is this happening for me? Why am I failing at this? Uh, and what I realized, and this has been kind of a process of years, is like, oh, I'm not that kind of person. He went on and now he's a community manager at Epic, and like all he does every day is like connect with people, just because that's the kind of person he is. And I realized like, when I come to a jam, the most important thing for me is to like let the jam lead me where it's going. And that sounds kind of like a weird stoner thing, but <laughs> <laughs> but really we have so short time and like you don't like as human beings we're not super flexible. You need to learn what you are and how you shape and like where you fit into the world. And one thing that I've been learning about myself is like I'm kind of accidentally this mentor person that like wherever I go I end up like running into students and they're like, I don't know, I like, I'm a really good engineer, but I don't get debugging. And I'm like, oh, let me talk to you about like this underlying principle and philosophy and like help, help them unlock something they didn't see before. Or I'm, I find the person who's like about to level up and they're just missing that key piece and whatever, there's something about me that helps me see like, oh, you have this, here, let me, click that last Lego in and they make the connection and everything that, you know, years of dots connect together. That's who I am. And it's like accidental, that just happens to me. And so one of the things I learned uh, about from this jam is just like, let the jam take you. You don't know where you're gonna end up. And that's kind of the beauty of the jam. It's organic and it's gonna grow and it's gonna become something else. Uh, one of the ways that you find out that about yourself is situations like this where you don't really have clear goals or rules. Um, I, I was really fascinated, one of my uh, math professors was showing us how to do math proofs and they're the most super incredibly logical thing and we're like, how do you, we're like, we don't get it. We see you do these proofs and they're all logical and they make sense but we have no idea how to just like figure out the next step and he was like, you learn to do proofs by watching people do proofs. I was like, what? And there's just this like innate creativity to like apply these mathematical rules. And you just have to go out in the world and let things grow and let the jam happen and you'll learn those things about yourself. Uh, while you're doing that though, like you can also, I, I made this game jam at where we were just completely off the rails and we had no idea what we were building and I, one of the tricks I learned from that is that like at the end of the day we had this cat that like picked up trash and like, windmills appeared. It was complete nonsense. Um, but what I learned is like every step of the way, uh, don't be daydreaming. It's really easy to like make this weird dream idea about what your game should be that's kind of like, and you were there and we were like walking down the like hall together, but like it wasn't the hall, it was sort of my university dorm room, except <laughs> The couch from where I lived last year was there, and then this like mournful World War Two, World War One general showed up, <laughs> and then and you, and it's like you can kind of get an idea about a game jam that or this game that you're building that sounds cool. It's like Starcraft, but there are Pokemon that you can collect, but that doesn't produce anything at the end of the day, and you don't learn anything from that. Instead, I want you to in your head create a movie of someone playing a game. What are they clicking on? What button or, or what number is changing? Or what text is on the screen? And if you focus on creating those really precise, detailed imagination movies, then you're gonna be working towards a goal and you can take that very next concrete step towards building something. And you know, ultimately, like the, the big thing we do here is build things. And so that comes through a process of concrete steps. That's one of the things I learned making that weird cat recycling game that didn't make any sense. Um, like, uh, also the, the schedule is really weird. You have so very little time. Um, sometimes I try to make the jam sort of look like everyone being set up to work on the project by like Friday night with like source control. You think, ah, maybe we should have more done than that, but invariably, you know, that kind of happens. Um, I also try to make a game that's like playable by Saturday before I go to bed. Like, hey, there's actually a thing that, you know, maybe it's just a dumb like baseball bat that like hits something. Uh, but I want that like concrete idea. And, and you know, maybe you're done by Sunday because, or Sunday at noon, because there's always gonna be like weird packaging problems and like, 
oh, I plugged in the fourth controller and it crashes. Why? Um, but at the same time, I also had a jam once where um, we had 14 people on our team. You think, oh, we get so much done. There's so many of us. Um, and, and like, honestly, we didn't even have a game the Sunday morning. It was like when the presentation started, we were lucky to get the last slot. And we made the entire game like while other people were presenting. <laughs> so, so like I said, like the jam kind of just becomes its own thing. Don't stress about it. But OK, so you have this super compressed schedule. Um, I, I had this guy come to me on Saturday, and, and he was totally opposite. He's like, I'm done with my game. It's Saturday night, I don't know what to do. And I was like, oh cool, I'll play test it for you. And he's like, play test? This is his first jam, he's never made a game before. I'm like, yeah, that's what we do, we should play test each other's games. And I played it and it was really lame. And I'm, you know, I was just like, how about these things? And I just started talking to him about, what if these things had, like these monsters had a relationship together and then you could like cause them to like get in a, get in a fight and break up and then, and it was like all these light bulbs started going on and he was like, wow, it, thank you for being so honest about my game and telling me how boring it was. And like, by the next day, it was like some crazy dating sim. And I was like, this is incredible. Um, and so the thing I learned from that is like, you don't have time to like hedge around and be diplomatic. Just like be brutally honest to each other and be totally open and be like, this is what I don't like and this is what I want it to be. And when you get feedback like that, you can make it that, you can listen to that feedback or you cannot. But, but keep in mind that everybody who's talking about your game is doing it on a compressed schedule. We got 48 hours. So just be totally open and honest. Um, but at the same time, when somebody comes up to you and they're like totally horrible about how terrible your game is, take it in stride. It's fine. Uh, I also did a, a jam with a friend of mine who brought in this artist and we made this game where this is one of like, the best looking games I've ever made because we had this super talented artist with us. It was a game where you were a spaceship and like you would take your crew members and like throw them down to the planet and then they would do mining and stuff for you. Uh, and at the end of the jam, this artist uh, came to my friend and he's like, I don't ever want to work with you again. <laughs> and, and he was just like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, you just want me for my art. <laughs> And we were like, well, what? <laughs> and we didn't understand at all, uh, but what we kind of like over the following weeks realized is like, oh, the only time we ever talked to this guy is when we want to jam with him. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we fixed that. We were like, oh, let's, we eventually like made up and we were friends again. And then um, my, the friend who was not the artist was like, dude, let's jam together again. And he's like, no, wait, I've learned that lesson. Let's go skiing together. <laughs> Um, it, it was like, I, so when I was playing Shenmue, I was like 18 and the, at the, the beginning, like the villains break in and they like kill the guy's father and like he's dying and he gives his son the last piece of advice, like, it's the beginning of the game, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> he's like, keep your friends close. And I was like, that's the lamest advice to get when you die. But the longer I live, the more I'm like, no, wait, that's really important. That's like, keep those relationships working. And so like when people are brutal, like they're just being your friends and like ultimately let's walk out of here, be extra forgiving to all the mean things that people say because they just want you to succeed here. Uh, and like, okay, how do you do that? How do you, how do you live through that? Uh, I think a really key thing here is like what you produce at this jam, the product of that is not your value. Like what you get done here is not how awesome of a person you are. I once did a jam where I had this really talented engineer and we were using Unreal and she knew tons of C++ and C Sharp and Java and all these things that she never used blueprints before. And so I was like, well, here this weekend you're gonna start learning blueprints. And at the end she was so bummed out. And I was like, why are you so sad? And she's like, all I've made is those platforms and it's back and forth. And like helps people with wheelchairs get over to um, and, and so I was like, but you learned how to do blueprints, right? And she was like, oh yeah, I have a new skill. <laughs> um, and so, but that's not even to say that that's the thing that gave her value though. I wanna say like, if you're the kind of person that takes notes, like get out of your paper, this is the moment where you write this down so you remember it on Sunday. You, right now, 
And on Sunday, our amazing, valuable, creative, ambitious, incredible person. And that's why you're awesome. Yeah, yeah. Give yourself a round of applause. Right? You guys are incredible. So, so like, you know, I totally believe this. I think, you know, I'm a cool person. I really like being around me. Uh, and so I'll just tell you what I just did over the last 48 hours so that, you know, if something similar to you happens over the next 48 hours, that's totally fine. Um, so I work at Microsoft. I work at HoloLens. I spent literally the last two days just, like, trying to compile the build and deploy it to my HoloLens. I made zero progress all, both days. And, and just, like, could not figure out why this exception is happening, why my HoloLens is crashing. Um, but I took a break. And I, at some point, was really frustrated about some like student subscription email things that I get, and so I mess I like made a post on the Microsoft like GitHub, uh, you know, group team thing, and uh, little did I know that that post went out to all eleven thousand Microsoft GitHub users, and then like somebody replied all with like not all heroes wear capes, <laughs> and all these like thank yous, and then people were, like unsubscribe me from this list. <laughs> And it just like cascaded. Because when there's 11,000 people on an email chain, it just gets longer. So uh, like a hundred, we're like 100 replies in of people being like, how do I remove myself from this list? And people are like, oh, this is how you unsubscribe. And oh, you, that doesn't remove you from existing threads. You have to unwash this thread. But then, oh, and that, I did that. And I'm still, this is all in the email thread. Like this is people talking about this stuff. And then it turns out there's a bug in GitHub that every time you reply all to an email thread, it mentions the group, which then resubscribes every 11,000 people <laughs> in the group. And, and so like people were tweeting about this, and like Business Insider did a news article about my email chain, and I still didn't get my build to compile or deploy on my device. So that's all I got done in the last two days. I'm still a cool person. We're all gonna hang out. It's gonna be great. So whatever you get done this weekend, I'm just to call, I'm just gonna call it now. It was a smashing success, and just keep smiling and let the jam lead you wherever it takes you. Thanks. Thanks, Eric, for that. Uh, now we'll uh, just get right into the uh, actual keynote video.
Hi, I'm Ruth Bo, founder of True Love, and co-creator of Hashtag Self Care. And I'm Megan Thomas, co-creator of Hashtag Self Care. Welcome to the 2019 Global Game Jam. What are you thinking about now when you start this adventure? Winning and losing? Levels and losses? Points and conquers? We like to start brainstorming by looking around at all the little moments we really like and that we don't often find in games yet. What if you started this game jam by thinking of all the things that make you feel good? What if instead of making games that seem easy and hard, it might sound bad for us to be good for you? Really good. Feelings like coincidences. Or deja vu. Or deja vu. Staring into someone else's eyes. Giving you compliments and really believing it. Finding something that you thought you'd lost. Feeling the ocean on the seashell. Picking up your phone just as your best friend calls you. Sending an important email you've been putting off all week. Trying out a new recipe and having it come out perfectly. Finishing a big project just before it's due. Listening to an album all the way through uninterrupted. Letting yourself binge watch a TV show when you should be working. Rereading your favorite book and holding a note tucked inside. Helping a friend with home renovations that seem really complicated but are actually super easy. Sending yourself a bouquet of flowers and pretending you're some super admirer. <laughs> Enjoying those flowers for a week and then carefully drying them so you can use them for a spell later as needed. <laughs> so why not try it for a minute? Close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and think about what makes you happiest. Then let it inspire you. Good luck.
camera can set up here. Uh, the point is not that I'm trying to draw a good cow. The point is that I'm drawing, trying to draw a cow despite being terrible at it. The Global Game Jam is an event in which you are free to experiment. It's going to be two days. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to be surrounded by a lot of creative people, and a lot of people around you are also here being quite nervous about how good they are at things. And I'm here to tell you that if you are terrible at drawing a cow, you can still draw a cow. Uh, in fact, I forgot to put the box on the cow. I should not do so. Um, but I think more importantly is that I'm actually having quite some fun drawing this cow. Uh, I think that I think the head should be lower. Anyway, point is that it's okay to fail. It's okay to just make something just because you want to try it. And there is no real way to get it wrong because in the end, creativity is about your choices. If I had this piece of paper and I was going to draw a line. We could argue about where the best line was going to be, but if I just had to draw a line here, then now actually it's kind of fun to argue about what this line should be or to think about what this line should be. Is this line a horizon? Maybe it's a horizon, or maybe it's a HUD, right? The bottom part of this thing is a HUD. Or what if I draw a second line? Like if I draw a line here, then does that turn into a road? Or maybe it's a beach, right? The sand is near us and the water after us. The point is that what's far more important than making the right choices or making the best choices, in an experimental event like this, in a place where you just get to try and get, try some choices, do some things that you wanted to try, wanted to play with, to find yourselves a team of people that is fun to work with or work alone, if you prefer that, on a team, whatever is best for you. And then make some choices, try some things. And remember that really, in an event like this, there's no real way to do things wrong. You are going to make a game, you're going to try that with the tools you know or, the or tools you don't know. You're going to experiment or do something safe, you're going to uh, work alone or you're going to work with friends. This is an event about just having a good time. So try and have a good time. And if you can, if you want to, try and learn. The only way to get the global game jam wrong is to not be nice. So during this event, be nice, be helpful, try and help others, try to take care of others, try to take care of yourself. Make sure that you rest, make sure that you sleep, make sure that you eat, make sure that you spend some time checking out everybody else's games. And don't just focus on just the game, because you can make games anywhere at any time, but you can't make games surrounded by so many other people that are making games as well all the time. So Make sure you hang out, make sure you talk to people, make sure you have fun. Because in the end, that's what the Global Game Jam is about. This is not a contest about being the best game developer in the world. This is a place for us, as game developers, to make some games with like-minded people. So go have fun. Introducing GameDev.World, a free, live-streamed online conference for game developers everywhere. Tune in June 21st to 23rd for two full days of talks, featuring Q&A, closed captioning, and live translation into the major languages of the world. Sign up for updates and details at www.gamedev.world and join us for the first truly global games conference.
Ingapo fikiria kuhusu nyumbani ya kuuka mambo matatu cha kulomzuri mazungumzo matumizi na mahali ninapoweza kulala farahani Farahani ni mahali na asi kutia nyumbani na kuzaa nje alo sisi kwa sasolo ما أحب أن يكون منزلي على هو مساحة دافئة حيث أغلق عيني بسلام. فلا سأن أنتحر من أي سبيل ممتد. C'est l'endroit où vit le proche. Donc, c'est l'endroit où vit l'Allemagne. Comme un ami de Rodrigues, qui est venu à la maison, et pour moi, cette parole est directement ligée à la tête initiale des vidéos, des websites ou des applications. Comme un ami de Rodrigues, qui est venu à la maison.
the um, PowerPoint gods are not with me today, but this will be the first of many technology-based failures that you all will experience. <laughs> so I feel in good, in good company. Um, okay, so um, just for some generalized ideas now, um, we're gonna take some time so you guys can all brainstorm your ideas about what this might look like. Some of you all came with people already to make games, some of you came by yourselves, some of you came not knowing the theme, hopefully that was all of you. Um, so the idea is that you're gonna brainstorm for 30 minutes, um, and then uh, individually you'll be able to get up here and make a pitch. We're talking a really short pitch. My slide was very funny, it's not up there, but that's okay. We're looking for like 60 seconds of, um, this is the general idea, this is who I have already, and this is who I'm looking for. Um, just for some framing past this, if this is your first game jam, so on Sunday, when we do presentations, and people are then sharing what their games are in total, what they've created over the last few days, um, the idea with those pitches is to keep them short and sweet, so you can already be thinking now about those pitches as uh, trailers for your games, essentially. So there's an opportunity, because you're gonna upload your game, everyone's gonna have an opportunity to play it, so on Sunday, you want to make a trailer, or you want to present people a trailer, so they go, that's so cool, at the end of this, after I sleep for 24 hours, I'm going to download that game and I'm going to play it. Um, so that means um, not spoiling the ending, for example. Uh, and the last thing that's worth knowing is that on February 10th, which is a Sunday, it's in two weeks, um, we're going to have an opportunity for you all to come back and showcase your games after you're very well rested, um, both to each other and to Science Center guests. That's going to be in this space here. Um, we'll send you more information about that, but the big thing to know right now is that when you bring something in your game, um, if you're super excited about the idea of showcasing your game in the future, think about all of the people who are gonna come check out that game in the future, including all those kids and families. So um, depending on what home means to you, uh, maybe uh, less on the sex and drugs and more on the rock and roll, uh, but that is completely up to you. So now is a good time to start um, brainstorming ideas. Um, you can do that in this space here. You can walk around the corner over here if you need more space to brainstorm. Um, and meet back here at 8.45. Uh, and then this is our word that Hawaii has a review now, so feel free to discuss it anywhere you want.